Hey, you want to weld some stainless today? Because I am. As you can see here, I got my tungsten really close to the puddle. I like to run really close to the puddle because I, I think it, the puddle manipulates the best when you're running real close like that with the tungsten. And I'm just doing a little technique, 1001, 1001, trying to keep the same rhythm. And I just go 1001, dip, move up, 1001, same thing, dip. Make sure my puddle's not too big or too small. And just dabbing. But I set my machine at 110 amps. I'm running probably half a pedal. I don't know exactly. I'm making sure I don't look and touch my tungsten. And the puddle is not too big. Making sure my filler wire don't ball up. Just like that, guys. Become one with the well. If you guys don't have a lot of money or anything doing out in the garage, go to a scrap yard or go to a metal place and look for the remnants. Ask them where the remnants at, all right? And just buy a lot of remnants left over from a job, all right? It's usually Half, half the price. As you can see here, there's good color, nice, consistent, uniform stacking uh, dimes here, nice ripples, no signs of overheating. So now that's a good weld. We're gonna show you a, uh, what a bad weld is, all right? So let's do this. One big problem I see is people running way too slow, way too much amps. When that happens, you're gonna cook the stainless. You're gonna cook all the chromium out of it and all the nickel, all right? So when we get done here, it's gonna be like dark colors, probably dark pink, maybe all gray, probably all gray. And the back side you're gonna see is like sugar. All right, we're cooking all the stainless out of it, or all the chromium and nickel out of it. We see this a lot of times when people dab too slow. <laughs> you guys see this right here? That's bad, it's going too slow. That's very bad, guys. You're moving too slow, all right? Don't move slow or you're gonna look like this, sugar. This is bad, your friends are gonna make fun of you, your fellow welders. Don't do that, go fast. Don't go slow like that and don't dab slow, all right? Keep practicing over and over, just move fast. On the first weld we ran, I was running a number 10 cup, running about 35 CFH. That gave me enough coverage to keep everything uh, shielded from the atmosphere. Nice envelope. On this one, we were running a 10 CFH and number five cup, that's way too small. We didn't have enough coverage and as you can see, we're outrunning our gas coverage. All right, so let's go take a look at this finished product of the weld, or finished weld. So as you can see, we didn't have enough gas coverage. We were running all gray. It's very bad weld, very unacceptable. So we gotta run the right CFH and the right cup to produce a good, clean, stainless weld. All right, we got the tungsten really close to the puddle. You see my uh, heat effect zone is going to be small when we're done here with this one. All right, then we're going to pull it away like this. I'm just get about eighth inch away. Everything's just going to start acting weird. My heat effect zone is going to get big, and the puddle is not going to be nice and uh, easy to manipulate. All right. Then I'm gonna go back in and show you guys the difference. We're keeping the same amperage, we're not changing nothing. Just just bring the tungsten closer back together, closer to the puddle. Alright. Alright. All I did here guys is change my arc length. You guys can see that. Uh, I was really tight here. Then I got real long it got really uh, long right here, my arc length. The weld got pregnant right here like a pregnant worm. Then I went back in right here. This was nice and uh, tight. My heat, heat, uh, my has changed right here. See, it got wide, then it got back to small right here. All right, you don't want to do that. It's a pregnant worm. Don't create a pregnant worm. Hopefully, guys, this is mighty helpful to you. This little session. I really enjoyed this session. This was a fun learning experience. If you guys, have any questions? Contact me on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook. Make sure you. Subscribe. Ding ding, you hear that? Subscribe. Have a good night. This is Man Cub signing out. Make every weld better, better than your last. I'm saying that because Redbeard is usually on, but learning is key. Little here. No, 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 no. What? We don't do on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> Any uh, questions or tips? Don't contact me and Cobb, contact Redbeard. I don't want to answer them <laughs> questions, guys, all right? <laughs>
All right, that's the three ways. How, wait, is it three ways we did? Yeah. All right, that's the ways of the stainless steel force. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right, that's the way the cookie crumbles. This, oh man, oh, that's stupid. Would you, you go like this? <laughs> this, this, this side? Yeah, it's going to be over there. This high or just like this? Yeah. That way's that. Or that. That's... <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Make sure you hit the like button or subscribe button right there. Or you're going to go like this. Subscribe.